Here are the 10 worst food practices from around the world. Number 10, yin-yang fish. The yin-yang fish is a dish with its roots back in China. However, it has been banned in several countries and is illegal in Australia and Germany, which means that if you're there and you try to cook a fish that way, you'll go to jail. Aw, you wonder why? Let's take a look. Well, someone thought that it would be just super awesome to show how much you care for the customer who walked into your restaurant and proved to him just how fresh the fish you serve is. So it's cooked while it's still alive. Not only that, you cook it, you deep fry it. And while doing that, you have to be careful not to kill it. Some chefs have come up with the genius idea of wrapping the head of the fish in a wet towel and deep frying it that way so it stays alive for longer. Once the body of the fish is cooked, but its organs are still well and working, they serve it in front of the customer who apparently is to happily indulge into eating a half alive meal. Five star review, here I come. Psych. Number nine, Ekizukuri. The Chinese got away on this one. It's completely and 100% Japanese. Yet, it's extremely controversial and again, banned and illegal in several countries. If you translate the name, it roughly means eaten alive, which is pretty much self-explanatory. However, note that eating something raw is one thing, but eating something alive is completely different. Anyway, restaurants that offer Ekizukuri have large fish tanks full with different types of fish. A naive customer might be a bit shocked at first, it doesn't sound that bad. You just pick a happy little fish, hey there buddy, and then they fish it out and ouch. It's not only chopped right in front of your eyes, but the chef has to do it in a way without killing it. The trick is to have it stay alive. Professionals recommend doing three cuts without damaging internal organs. Then, as if that's not bad enough, the chef would reassemble it back together like a weird puzzle and serve it in a plate with some vegetables. That way, you end up with a chopped up and yet reassembled fish in your plate that is staring at you and is obviously as confused as you are. Do you see how much everyone is worried about keeping the food fresh? I'd say a bit too much. Yeah, serve my food dead, please. Number eight, Heibusaki. Another Japanese invention, Heibusaki is also known by the name Habushu. The name comes from the venomous snake Habu used for this process. In this particular case, an alcoholic liquor originating from Okinawa, Japan is used that has been infused with some bit of a snake venom. Delicious! The controversy around the drink is that the snake isn't even killed beforehand. Producers just shove it in a bottle and let it drown on its own alcohol. Some have been trying to ease the process by putting the snake on ice and removing its intestines after it passes out. Then they proceed by putting the snake in 59% alcohol and afterwards moving it to a bottle filled with liquor. When choosing to go with the second method, the distinctive smell of the drink, which is mostly coming from the intestines of the snake otherwise, is lost. Apparently, a lot of customers get disturbed by that fact. Even though such an extreme method is used in its production, it's still a very popular drink in Asia. The Habu snake can mate for as long as 26 hours, so many people drink the Habu sake with the hope that it will improve their, ahem, yeah. I just probably recommend popping a Viagra. Number seven, drunken shrimp. Since we're talking about dunking animals and alcohol, here's another alcoholic delicacy. Again, this one is widely popular in Southeast Asia and the whole point of it is for you to bite the head off of the poor shrimp who's at least only semi-conscious because of the alcohol. As the name itself applies, the shrimps are first put in ethanol or some other alcohol of choice and considering the fact that they're tiny, it takes less than a minute or two for them to get drunk. Afterward, the alcohol is tossed out and the tiny shrimp are marinated in a sauce since they are, technically speaking, drunk. They become thirsty, as far as a shrimp can become thirsty, and thus absorb a huge amount of the sauce. Some prefer to actually cook the shrimp in addition to marinating it, but the original recipe doesn't include any cooking. They're served covered with a lid so they don't become too eager and jump into your lap, which totally brings this head-biting thing into a whole different level. 
Number 6. Sanakji Moving a bit further east, and we're now in Korea, a place where Sanakji originates from. It's a traditional dish where you're served a portion of live octopus tentacles that are still moving on the plate in front of you. Again, you have the option of choosing your own octopus, most often a baby one, then it's quickly chopped up, sprinkled with some sesame oil and seeds, and served in front of you. If they wait even a bit longer, the tentacles, which are full of nerve endings and this wiggling, stop moving. Apparently that just ruins the whole fun. Yet it's worth mentioning that this is not only traumatizing for the octopus itself, but it can present a real choking hazard for the one eating the dish. Statistics say that five or six people die each year while eating sanakchi. Tentacles, even when removed from the body, have large sucking power and can stick to your throat. Talk about getting revenge, huh? Number 5. Balut Balut is a traditional street food from the Philippines that has been becoming more and more popular in the West as well. The balut is a developing bird embryo, usually one from a duck. A chicken embryo can be used as well. Then the egg is boiled exactly like you'd boil an egg, and eaten straight out of the shell. Apparently, some prefer to only use fertilized eggs that are 18 days old, swearing it gives the balut a whole different flavor. When cracked open, you can see the small body of the bird. Another fun fact would be that, weirdly enough, balut is usually served with beer. Yep, you heard that right. The same as you get peanuts with your beer in a western pub, you might as well expect a balut with your beer in the Philippines. Even though, technically speaking, the bird inside isn't alive alive, this practice is judged upon for, well, I mean, let's be for real. They're boiling a live creature. Anyways, it's popular and eaten not only in the Philippines, but in other countries in Asia as well. Men eat it in the hope that they'll improve their sexuality, while women are especially encouraged to eat it when being pregnant since it's rich in protein. Number 4. Shark Fin Soup Legend has it that the shark fin soup can be traced all the way back during the Ming Dynasty, meaning that it's been on the tables in southeastern Asia for a bit more than four centuries. There's a story going around that an emperor wanted to show just how powerful and wealthy he is, so he ordered every single person at one of his banquets a shark fin soup, which is of course the appropriate way to show how bawling you are in Asia. If you're still thinking, hey, this isn't that bad, we eat fish every day, then hear this. All would be fine if the sharks were treated humanely, to say the least. However, shark finning is most often done on sharks that are still alive and in the most brutal way. After cutting their fins off, they're thrown back into the sea. And what's a shark to do without its fins? The shark pretty much just dies. The worst part is that the fin doesn't even add any flavor to the soup. The flavor of the soup is actually coming from the chicken broth. The fin is added just to change the texture of the soup. I mean, really? This is just pretty much like popping bottles at the club. You're not doing it for the alcohol, but you're doing it for the status associated with popping bottles at the table. Except that popping bottles hurts no one except feelings and wallets, and you know what? I'm totally fine with that. Number 3. Kopi Luwak Nicknamed as the most expensive coffee in the world, Kopi Luwak is a type of coffee that goes through a rather special production process. It literally goes through the body of an Asian civet. Yes, you have that right. The coffee is made out of poop. The civet is a cat-looking or a monkey-looking mammal that lives in Asia. And decades ago, when the coffee luwak wasn't as popular, the digested coffee beans could be found on the forest ground. In 2012, it was said that the production of the coffee, nicknamed civet coffee, may pose a potential threat to the civet numbers. Not only are they kept in captivity, civets are force-fed with coffee beans only in order to speed up the production process. When living in nature, their diet is absolutely much more diverse, and this includes fruits, reptiles, and insects. It's known that the coffee has a better taste because of the digestive enzymes in their bodies, which is responsible for removing the acidity from the coffee beans. The question that lingers is how much can the coffee maintain the same level of quality if the animal is forced to go through the process rather than chooses to do it by itself. Number 2. Foie gras At number 2 we have a rather well known and common dish not only in France from where it originates but also around Europe, USA and Canada. The foie gras is a meal made from the liver of a goose or a duck, however not a regular one but a fattened one. 
Those who sampled the dish share that the texture of the liver is fatty and buttery, unlike the one you can taste when eating a normal goose or duck liver. This is achieved by force feeding the birds with a metal pipe that's pushed down their throats and through which corn mix is pumped straight into their digestive systems. And in order to prevent the bird from opposing this monstrosity, how dare they deny free food, they're kept in tiny, dark cages. Another sad fact is that when young birds are left to live a normal life, running around and doing the stuff every duck or goose should be doing, this isn't out of humane reasons. Farmers are doing this to strengthen their esophagus so it can hold the mammoth influx of food. However, it still happens that some of them die, and rather painfully, during this feeding frenzy. Number 1. Ortolan Ordlin is considered a real delicacy in the gourmet world, and it has its origins in France. Yep, you heard that right. No Asians this time. However, France has been taking some legal action to stop this horrible tradition. Actually, Ordlin is a type of small bird that's around 6 inches long. Pay attention, there's a catch in the size here. Once the bird is captured in the wild, it's immediately put in a dark room and blinded with a pair of pincers. Then it's put in a cage so tight that a six inch bird isn't able to move. After that, it's introduced to a diet of only millet, grapes, and figs. See what they're doing here? They're trying to fatten up the poor bird and most often the birds manage to become four to six times bigger. So if that's not enough, after the bird is fat enough, it's drowned by being put in brandy. As far as the actual cooking of the bird goes, the meat is so tender that they're only cooked for 10 minutes at the longest. When the time comes to savor the ortolan, you put the whole bird in your mouth with only its head sticking out. Then, as if trying to hide your misdeeds, you cover your mouth with a napkin and bite off its head. Enjoying the rest of its tender body, it's believed that this napkin tradition has begun with a priest who had much enjoyed his ortolan but was scared of God's fury as well. Here's what's next. This perilous job possibly tops almost all mentioned in this list. Really, this should be number 1B. Sewage diving is a well-known job in all corners of the globe. If there's a blockage or a broken drain, someone's got to get down there and sort it out, just like that diver in Australia. The difference